Welcome, everybody, to Transforming Customer Experience for Insurance with Conversational AI. My name is Jared, and today I'm going to spend about 30 minutes to tell you what an AI agent is, some simple use cases that you can get started with in weeks, and the business impact of that. So with that, let's get started. Insurance isn't something that people are excited about, you know, like a new iPhone or car that they're not on Instagram, you know, taking pictures of themselves using this, right? When people wear a new dress, when they use their iPhone or they drive their new car, most of the time they're pretty happy. Um, when people have to use their insurance, something has gone wrong. Um, and, you know, what kind of a mindset is that person in? It's not... It's not somebody who just got the wrong color shirt in the mail or the wrong size pants from Amazon. Um, so what I'm saying is, you, you know, we can't treat them the same way as, you know, your average customer service experience, right? So what does that mean for customer service? Now, you know how in every single Hollywood movie, uh, which I find hilarious, you know, when bad things happen, everybody gets a blanket. Right. Even if you spend all night fighting terrorists in an L.A. skyscraper and it's California and it's 75 degrees outside, you still get a blanket. Um, but this is actually a real thing that EMTs do, um, even the ones who don't work in cold climates, because it's psychological. Right. That blanket helps create a, a barrier between the victim and the outside world. It you know, might remind you of being wrapped up in bed, being safe under the covers, being tucked in. Right? It's not because they're cold. Otherwise, they could just give out free sweatshirts. But, um, you know, your customer service should be the same. It's not just about delivering great experience in this case, because that's what consumers expect anyway, to be honest. It's about that in that very moment when somebody reaches out to you, uh, they're vulnerable, they're having a bad day, and they want to feel like things will be taken care of and they don't have to worry. So what is preventing you from actually delivering that customer experience? Uh, well, for one thing, uh, attrition, which was everybody's favorite boogeyman for a long time, um, is not even the worst anymore. It's finding qualified people in the first place. Um, you know, and with labor shortages on top of that comes dealing uh, problems dealing with peak loads, right? Like like a spike in contacts from, say, a hurricane or a flood. Um, humans are not scalable in the first place, much less when you don't have enough. Um, and finally, cost pressure, right? Um, you know, the labor issues, the ability to serve all of these channels that customers demand, um, you know, is, is still very difficult. And after all, you know, the customer experience is, is often the bigger differentiator here than, than the actual policy itself. Um, and, you know, with all of that, I'm saying the odds don't seem good. They don't seem in favor of good customer experience. So it's time to change them. How are we going to do that? In order to both fill that labor gap in customer service departments and to improve service, you can deploy fully pre-trained AI agents. And what do I mean by that? It's a useful metaphor for AI-based solutions that use both conversational and generative AI and essentially function like additional staff, like coworkers for your agents. They work alongside the humans who are already there and assist them. They can handle phone calls and chats, messages, and hundreds of languages. Um, they already know pre-trained insurance processes, like say first notice of loss. Um, and on top of that, you can feed the AI your documents so that they can learn your policies, your coverage, your processes. Uh, and obviously, they can work 24/7, uh, you know, including holidays, and they have zero risk of attrition. So. For example, um, let's just say you're adding AI coworkers to your human agents. Processes that were previously manual, um, or perhaps you know maybe only the IVR part was automated, can start to look like this. You know, you'll see an incoming request, whether that's on voice, whether that's on some sort of you know text-based digital channel, it's going to get qualified, right? They're, the the AI is going to say, what does this customer need? Then they're going to do the ID and V. Then based on what's going on. They can either hand them over to a human agent or kick off a self-service process. But on both of those cases, even if we go to a human agent, that AI is still sitting in the background. It's listening into that voice call. It's reading into that digital text message or chat. And it's still proactively assisting that human agent the entire time. And then even when that is over, 
the AI is sitting there having analyzed the call, gotten the transcripts, and doing most of that after call work and putting that into a case for you. So I've talked a lot, um, but let me go ahead and show you an example in action. Hello, and welcome to Insure Luna. How can I help you? Yeah, I was in a car accident yesterday, and I need to file a claim. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that and hope you're okay. Let's get started on your claim right away. I see you're calling from the number on your account, so I already have your insurance details. Can you please confirm your date of birth? Sure. It's um, July 18th, 1983. Thank you. When did the accident happen? It was yesterday about 7 p.m. Got it. Can you tell me what happened? Sure. I was driving from uh, Chicago Oak Park to the airport, and at the intersection of uh, North Avenue and First Avenue, another car ran the red light and hit me. Uh, so the right front side of my car is completely damaged. I'm very sorry to hear that. Thank you for the information. Do you have any pictures of the damage? Yeah. All right. I'm going to send you a text message with a link where you can upload the pictures. Okay, I uploaded the pictures um, so you can see the damage pretty clearly. Thank you. We're almost finished with your claim. Now I'll connect you to an agent for a final review and to answer any remaining questions you may have. Great, thanks. Hello, this is Sebastian. I see your claim is already in the system and you've uploaded a picture. So uh, it looks like these are all the details we need. I'll email you the claim documents shortly. Thanks. Um, so what's the next step for me? So we'll handle the settlement directly and notify you once it's done. Um, will you need a rental car while yours is being repaired? Yeah, that would be great. Um, how does that work? Mm, let me check. So your policy covers the cost of a rental uh, until your car is repaired and up for, and for up to three business days afterward. We'll arrange the rental car to be delivered to you. I have your address as 674 Elmwood Avenue, Oak Park, Illinois, 60302. Is that correct? Yep, that's correct. You're welcome. Uh, would you like to be notified via text message when your car is ready for pickup? Uh, yeah, that'd be great. All right. Is there anything else I can help you with? Um, no, that was much easier and faster than I expected. Thank you. You're welcome. We're here for you 24-7. Don't hesitate to reach out if you have any more questions. So goodbye. Bye. All right, so what did we just see aside from a very good looking customer? A fluid multimodal first notice of loss experience. Um, you know, so we saw the customer starting on a voice channel, then simultaneously while the voice channel is open, switching to a text message, then using an on device uh, camera, for example, to upload an image, right? Which is immediately added to the ticket. You know, so then we see from the AI to the agent, a warm handover to the employee. The, you know, the agent already knows who's calling, why they're calling. They've got all the data in front of them, including the photo already. Um, but, you know, this, I mean, this is a, a game changer. Think about how many times you've had to repeat yourself over and over and over. Those days are gone. Um, in the fourth step, uh, I, you know, if you were paying attention to the to some of the small details, you saw that the AI, even though it was not the primary contact, uh, it was still supporting the employee, right? This is creating automated transcripts, suggested responses. Um, you could see the sentiment, sentiment analysis uh, up in the top left, um, you know, proactively querying the knowledge base and putting information up on the screen so the agent doesn't even have to say, oh, wait a second, and actually go search themselves. Um, but, you know, at the same time, while all of this is going on, the agent, the human is still 100 percent in charge, right? The, the AI is not telling them what to do. It's just trying to help them, right? That's why we call it assist. Um, and then, you know, finally at the end, where typically you can have one, two, three minutes of after call work, we see all of that value, right? That where the AI has been listening in, has a full transcript of the call already. Use generative AI to summarize that call an integration into Salesforce to create that case, connect it to the customer, 
put that summary in there and all the agent has to do is give it a quick look, make sure everything is right and click OK. Uh, you know, but of course, this is just one example. Uh, AI agents can do plenty more. And surprise, surprise, I have a few more examples. Um, you know, things like GPT power, uh, powered FAQs, right? You can take your PDFs, your Word documents, your website, drop that all into Cognigy and use AI to give not just, you know, standard FAQ copy paste answers that we all hate. Uh, and even if they're right, they kind of seem suspicious because they feel like a copy paste, um, you know, but using generative AI, you're going to get that natural language answer like a human would give you. Um, you know, automated IDNV, we've seen things like license plate detection using, you know, on-device options on your phone, using optical character recognition, uh, even location sharing with your phone's GPS, for example. Uh, I mean, I would say the possibilities are endless. They're, they're probably not completely endless, but they're pretty close. Um, you know, and what does that mean, right? The, the future of customer service, right? The customer service that we've all been waiting for uh, on both sides of the equation is instant, Omni-channel and multimodal, and it's personalized. So, talking about AI agents again, you're going to hear me say it a few times. Um, you know, AI is a force multiplier for employees, uh, and especially in contact centers where you've got you know just a few agents holding that line. You know, I kind of think about the movie 300 and seeing the you know these masses of angry customers and just you know like 300 lone contact center agents. Maybe that's a little too heroic. I don't know. Um, but, you know, you've got AI agents here waiting in the wings, ready to come out, ready to reinforce your call center to take over these repetitive, these frustrating, you know, this never ending work that drives your agents out the door and waste your customers time, to be honest. Um, so what does that look like? Exactly. Humans and AI working together. That means, for example, a call comes in. We have agent assist, which we've seen, but this this extends not only to say a voice channel. This can also extend to incoming chats, to messaging apps like WhatsApp, Telegram, um, I, you know, um, iMessage, right? This could be instant personalized service on all of these channels, right? And of course, every channel is not the same. They all have benefits. They all have drawbacks. Uh, and this is the beauty of being able to use them in combination and at times simultaneously, right? So that we have the AI there able to act as that force multiplier where you see just three agents here, for example, and yet the amount of things that they're able to handle, not even single issues, but issues across multiple channels goes up significantly. Now, I'd love to stop there, but the beauty is, which I kind of talked about earlier, is these AI agents can augment not just uh, you know, agents in terms of only doing ID and V, for example. Um, language is also come into play here, where you can have someone sitting in a call, you know, in a call center in, say, the US and the Philippines and in India, somewhere in Europe, wherever, and still dealing with a wide array of languages using both bi directional translation, um, e even using generative AI to help. Um, so, really, the, the possibilities here are essentially what your imagination can come up with. You know, don't don't quote me on that to the lawyers, but um, what I'm trying to get at here is you don't want to start from scratch, right? Start with Cognigy. AI agents can start in a short amount of time. They're not a blank slate, right? They're going to come with a variety of pre-trained industry skills for insurance, pre-configured processes, terminology, intents, and more. Things like claim processing, um, policy recommendations, uh, common processes to upgrade, change your coverage or your policy, um, gathering e-signatures, collecting documents, for example. Right, All of these very, very common, um, but often labor-intensive, yet repetitive tasks that can easily be handled by an AI agent. Now, What's the outcome of all this? Well, for agents and customers, I'm not going to lie, it's fantastic. So for the, the customer outcome, coming back to the blanket, which I, you know, I promised was going to be a thing, um, is everything's going to be okay. 
right? Stepping back from all the processes and the KPIs, right? The, the very first thing that you, that you really want that insurance customer to walk away from, because they're not going to remember all the details, right? When something has happened, um, you want them to walk away with, they've got my back. Everything's going to be fine. Yes, there's going to be some inconvenience, probably some forms to sign, but everything is good. I, I feel taken care of, right? But of course, that's not what your manager is going to want to see. So let's talk about business impact in terms of numbers. Um, these are a few averages based on our own customer experiences so far, um, especially just by using an AI agent, for example, for something as simple as IDNV. You can see massive improvements in AHT, you know, cutting it up to a quarter even, you know, and that's not just amazing for customers, uh, but that means significant savings um, and a reduction in that cost, cost pressure that we talked about earlier. For the customer overall, you've got thoughtful automation via AI that's speeding up and simplifying repetitive processes that ultimately steal a lot of our time and especially steal our patience so that by the time we talk to the human, we're very angry. Uh, so this means happier customers. Um, you know, and on top of that, this ability to deliver multimodal experiences that honestly are so easy, people won't even notice them. Uh, because they'll feel so obvious, like uploading a picture immediately, like you could do with a friend uh, on iMessage. Why can't you do that with a customer service agent? Um, finally, uh, in terms of how they help with the, the labor shortage, well, being able to offload these processes, right? And then on top of that, having that agent assist live in real time on every channel increases confidence. It reduces that burden of tier one inquiries that just drive agents right out the door. Um, you know, and and just, you know, despite, you know, all of the wonders that I'm talking about, you know, AI agents are precision tools, you know? So I'm not saying like we've got a hammer and everything looks like a nail. Um, they're not the solution to everything. We've got to look at different processes and, you know, figure out where is their value, right? Where's their customer value and where's their business value? Because they both need to be there. So getting detailed support on, you know, really complex policy questions, uh, you know, assisting kind of a long-term high value cut business customer, figuring out some unusual international incident. These are obviously things that you're going to need a person for, right? And rightly so. Um, but you don't need that for everything. And even when you do need a person for these examples, you still don't need them for ID and V, do you? Um, so again, we want to talk about thoughtful and value-added automation via AI. Um, let's take an example. Um, one of the largest insurance companies in the world with a private or with private and business customers in about 70 countries deployed an AI agent from Cognigy purely to do ID and V, right? Nothing more. Right, we're talking about millions and millions and millions of phone calls every year all over the world. Now, unfortunately, we're not officially allowed to use their name and logo. Um, you know, so you probably have to Google it a little bit. But uh, I, I gave it this, you know, re government redacted document look just for fun. Um, so a single AI agent with a very narrow focus. Right, we're, we're not talking about end-to-end -end automation. We're not talking about some mind-blowing use case that's cutting edge. Right. Just ID and V handled millions of calls every year. And, you know, I don't want to knock humans, but um, let's be honest, this type of performance and scalability is only possible with AI. Um, you know, and naturally that you realize, given the situation, this isn't only in English, right? This is in many different languages all at the same time. Um, so you can imagine a 27% decrease in AHT adds up to a lot of dollars and a lot of cents. Now, I'd like to take a few final moments just to talk about us at Cognigy and give you a little bit of an idea about why customers like that trust us and why you should too. So Cognigy has been consistently praised by analysts like Gartner um, ever since the magic quadrant for conversational AI uh, has existed. We've been a leader in it uh, in the critical capabilities report, which looked at five different service use cases. As you can see here, Cognigy was the first company ever to score number one in every single one. And that's beating out, you know, IBM, Google, Amazon, 
right? Cognig isn't everything to everyone. We're great at AI and it shows. But, you know, it's not just the analysts who love us, you know, the, the tech nerds who love to, you know, dig into details like that. It's especially and honestly, even more importantly, it's our customers. Um, you know, customer experience is really important to you and to your customers. So the same goes for us. Um, you know, in 2023, we've won the Voice of the Customer Award from Gartner with 98% of customers recommending us and consistently beating all the other major players and household names like Google, like AWS, like IBM. Um, so th the short answer is you're you're in good hands. And finally, because insurance is no stranger to regulations and certifications, um, we take privacy, uh, privacy and security very seriously. Otherwise, we wouldn't have some of the largest enterprises in the world like Lufthansa or Toyota or Bosch um, trusting us for their global customer service. Now, uh, I'm going to avoid a little trouble here, and I'm not going to try to pronounce this this uh, you know very top option here. Um, a purpose-built AI agent or AI as a service um, for clearly defined use cases, like I think I've stressed, uh, means deployment in weeks, not months, not years, weeks. And as we've seen, they're scalable, whether you're handing, handling hundreds, thousands, or millions of calls in one country or dozens of countries. Um, so that's going to give you a not only just a really fast time to value, um, but that's going to be a very quick solution for, for pressing issues like those labor shortages, like that agent attrition. Um, but of course, for enterprise customers, you know, you may be thinking, oh, I want that ultimate control. I'm thinking much further than just, you know, one or two narrow use cases, and that's fine. Um, you know, if you prefer a hands-on experience, we've got the leading conversational AI platform on the market to give you that ultimate control to let your own AI experts go in there and build to their heart's content. So with that, I'd like to say thank you for listening, and I hope that you have remembered all of those three things because there will be a quiz. Bye.